We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are, are all united. united. Thanks very much and uh, welcome everyone uh, to uh, all of you who've uh, been able to come here today uh, to take part in, in this session. Um, I'd like to uh, say hello first to uh, the people physically there in uh, Cavais. Uh, so hello to uh, Mark, Youssef and also to Alka, um, who I see there. Uh, and hello. Hi Alka. Um, and also uh, joining me online is Hendrik, uh, Hendrik Eich from uh, Giant, and one of my other colleagues, uh, Charlene, should hopefully be joining us shortly. So just to give you uh, an overview, um, hello, my name is Chris Atherton. I'm a senior research engagement officer at an organization called Giant. Giant is uh, one of the fundamental elements of the Europe's e-infrastructure, delivering a pan-European um, network for scientific research, education, and innovation. Giant's also a participating member in an organization called the Group on Earth Observations, uh, otherwise known as GEO. Uh, this uh, uh, Giant ourselves, we represent the interests of all of the national research and education networks uh, um, in Europe, um, our members, and through, uh, through us, we promote their work uh, and try and find opportunities to collaborate with other GEO members uh, to help support science and also researchers' needs. Uh, through uh, the integrated catalogue that we have of connectivity, collaboration, and identity management services, Giant provides users with uh, highly reliable, unconstrained access to computing analysis, storage applications, and other resources uh, to ensure that Europe remains at the forefront of research. And so I'm joined today with representatives from the other regional research and education networks uh, from Latin America and uh, North Africa and the Arab states. Uh, but we'll come on to um, the other participants in a moment, um, just to give you an idea about what this session is about. Uh, essentially, global research and education networks support the advancements in global scientific knowledge, especially related to climate change and also the sustainable development goals. Uh, the observation data, the analysis, and the education materials, which are essential uh, for addressing these matters under the UNFCCC, for example, and also the, the SDGs, uh, are transported to and from researchers using national research and education networks. And so uh, for some NRENs, uh, compute and storage services are also provided to researchers in support of the climate change research and also the sustainable development goals. So the global research and education networks uh, facilitate the cooperation between researchers across borders and continents. Our work contributes towards Articles 4.1 uh, G and H and also Article 5 and Article 6 of the UNFCCC. And we've uh, also, uh, today we're going to discuss uh, which uh, sustainable development goals are actually um, uh, well, targeted or supported by the, the global research and education networks. Um, to meet the UN's sustainable development goals, tackle climate change, and to prepare for and respond to disasters, man-made or otherwise, uh, requires data, essentially. This data is increasingly being centralized into large data sets uh, from a variety of different sources and at varied volumes uh, as the pace of technology advances. So the, the number of data sources and the volumes of data continues to grow exponentially. And while challenges exist in acquiring, transport, transporting, storing, processing, and analyzing the data, um, there also exists a growing divergence in the capabilities of the number of nations and citizens from the Global South countries to be able to participate in this field at that scale uh, in comparison, say, for example, to countries from the Global North. So the geo communities focus on the transmission and the exchange of data, which is utilized in the realm of geospatial research, and geospatial research being the investigation into the various aspects of earth science, but with a focus on a particular location. And this relies upon a number of communication layers and distribution systems. 
and these layers and systems controlled by a number of different actors when intermixed form a transparent underlying service, otherwise known as the internet. And uh, in some respects, these layers are operated by a number of private, as in commercial, and also non, uh, not-for-profit or governmental and non-governmental organizations of which uh, the, the national research and education communities typically fall into. And so uh, this communications commons is what uh, the geo community relies upon for its systems and services to work. And over the past few months, members of this panel uh, have been working together to define the means of supporting the goals and the ambitions of the geo community, uh, specifically in the realm of research and education networking. Uh, the last such meeting was held at, uh, sorry, held at COP26 where the CEOs of the organizations involved define the values which we want to hold dear while we work towards a collaborative way of working. And those values, uh, global collaboration, global integration, equitable access to um, resources and data, transparency and trust will form the basis of the discussions in this session as we work towards establishing and articulating a vision uh, which will then serve as the basis of a collaboration agreement in the future. And to help us reach that vision, we're joined today by my fellow fellow panelists. Uh, so I'd like to uh, start first by um, offering the floor to uh, to Mark Urban. Uh, Mark, over to you if you'd like to provide a bit of an introduction and a brief explanation about the organisation that you're from. Thank you very much, Chris, and uh, thank you for giving me the floor in this uh, uh, nice panel today. Um, I'm uh, Mark Urban, I'm a CFO of uh, Red Clara. Uh, Red Clara is, uh, let's say, the, a, a corresponding partner in, in Lat for Latin America of Géant and of ASRIN. And uh, we are really, as such, we are a federation of national research and education networks, just like Géant is in, U in Europe and ASRAN in the Arabic uh, world. So uh, basically, we, we, our objectives are quite similar to those of uh, Jean and ASRAN and uh, to, to, to give uh, to the academic uh, communities uh, uh, digital tools uh, for, for research and education, basically. And uh, that's why also that we, we gathered today because we, we want to uh, really to ensure that these uh, tools will benefit uh, uh, the, the development of actions in, in especially in, in facing the, the challenges that uh, the, the worldwide community is, uh, is currently facing like uh, climate change, and uh, that's also why we 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 um, uh, we we are we, we became members of uh, of Geo just like uh, uh, Jean and Asrin are, uh, and uh, in in that context we we wanted to 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 come together and uh, uh, ensure that this. Uh, momentum that we uh, have reached at the, at the COP26 uh, uh, meeting, uh, we, we can just uh, get, uh, uh, get a step further and uh, 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 really uh, get to, 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 to some concrete actions. No, that, that's uh, so uh, in, I'm thanking you again for, for this opportunity and I, I, I would like to to give back the floor now to, to you, Chris. Great, thanks very much, Mark. Um, joining Mark in the hall is also uh, Youssef Tolman. Uh, Youssef, would you like to um, introduce yourself and give a brief explanation about uh, your organization? Thanks. Sure. Hello, everybody, and thank you, and happy to be with you and in this nice, nice country. Uh, unfortunately, we are missing some colleagues, but maybe next time we can be convened all together Yes, I represent uh, ASRIN, which is the Arab States Research and Education Network. We focus on the Arab region uh, to provide them with the dedicated services for the research and education communities. Uh, I have the liberty also to, to speak on behalf of the African Regional Research and Education Network, our sister organizations, uh, Ubuntu Net Alliance, which works for the East and South uh, African uh, 
part of the of Africa, and also WACRIN, which works for the West and Central part of Africa. Uh, I represent in this case the North Africa, but I can speak on behalf of all because we all work together under a project called Africa Connect 3 under which we have several uh, activities. Among them, one of them is to be engaged with the research and education communities, uh, which was the key for us to support us and to, to be uh, in touch with the research and education community, communities, especially the uh, group on Earth Observation, which we are now uh, full uh, sharing uh, participation, participating organization as a member of the group on Earth Observation, like uh, Giant and also uh, I read Clara. Uh, as I said, Astrin is, Astrin's focus was uh, maybe in various intervention areas, but among them, mainly they are, <coughs> sorry, they are around uh, providing digital research and education infrastructure networks uh, for the regional, uh, at the regional level to connect the national entrance to the global research and education networks. We provide also research and educational services like educational roaming, federated access, and through EduGain. Uh, we work on science cooperation through uh, the, uh, be, being in, in touch and in engagement with the United Nations SDGs, which uh, also uh, under which also we support the open science activities, open access and open educational resources and platforms for science cooperation. We work uh, uh, very active in uh, community engagement, especially uh, group and earth observation with focus on the African a group on Earth observation with, the, with plans to have the Arab group on Earth observation, in addition to other other uh, other uh, communities uh, like uh, Earth, uh, satellite, uh, radio astronomy communities, physical uh, physics communities, HPCs, and so on. Uh, I believe uh, for for the United Nations SDGs. Uh, Research and education networks can be instrumental for all, for all uh, SDGs, um, either through educational edu promoting this to education to universities uh, to get them engaged with uh, with other. Uh, we need research for, for uh, number one, no poverty. Yes, it is exactly something which is not directed to, to the, our infrastructure we provide. But for example, uh, the same the same for zero hunger. Uh, all all SDGs. I think we can uh, be instrumental to achieving all these diseases, including the 17th one, which is partnership, which we are trying to do all together with the, uh, uh, I, I like the words of my colleague, uh, Luis uh, Cadenas, who is the CEO of uh, Red Clara. He said, we, we want to have the la triangle, cooperation triangle between Latin America, Europe, and Africa. So we are here to, uh, under also even under the 17th, we are also cooperating uh, to achieve the, the, the goals. I will not speak along uh, more than this for, for now, uh, maybe for the specific SDGs uh, that we are going to address, I, it will be taken later in the dis uh, discussion. So for now, I leave, it, leave the floor back to uh, Chris. I hope I did not uh, speak too much. Oh, no, but Youssef, that was perfect. Thank you very much. Um, and, uh, Thank you for the introduction. Uh, joining um, both Mark and Youssef on the panel, uh, it, not from the, um, uh, well, not from a, an infrastructure, so to speak, but from the research community uh, is my colleague, Charlene Gabba, who's joining us online. Um, Charlene, if you'd like to take a moment just to introduce yourself and also uh, the, the organization that you work for. Thanks. Okay, so good morning, everyone. I'm really happy to be here today. So I am Dr. Charlene Gaba. I'm a specialist in water resources. So modeling of water resources and climate change. So I currently work as an expert for the Regional Climate Center um, Agreement. They have expertise in water resources, uh, meteorology, um, also all questions related to the environment and pastoralism. So quickly, I will quickly pre uh, present the organization. So it's a West African organization and we provi provide uh, information for decision-making uh, in the countries. So in the West African countries, we also work in terms of um, forecasting. 
So we do forecasting for water for floods, flood and drought at a various time scale. So 10 day seasonal, we also develop tools to help the end users in the various countries to face um, floods and climate uh, issues. We also product uh, knowledge. So we do research, that's why I'm here. So we do research to support um, how the various countries um, face, um, they adapt to climate issues in their countries. So we also develop tools. For example, I'm working on the development of a web platform to help population uh, prepare in face of uh, floods, for example, and also for agricultural yields. Yeah. So yeah, this is quickly what we do here at Nigrement. Thank you. Thanks very much, Charlene. And also um, joining me online, uh, I'd, I'd like to give a mention to Hendrik Eich um, from Giant, uh, who helped organize this session, and also to Al Kapaus, who's uh, joining us uh, live in person in, uh, in Katowice, uh, who also helped. Uh, so if um, Hendrik and Alka, if you'd like to just give a brief uh, hello. Yeah, I can uh, go first. Hello, everyone. Uh, Hendrik from uh, Géant, um, one of Chris's uh, colleagues and uh, well, one of Alka's ex-colleagues because he's uh, now moved on to a different organization, but he was very um, helpful in um, helping us bring this session together. So thanks, Alka. Um, my specific job today is actually um, because Chris will be asking uh, the questions and um, the content, the answers of those questions, we're not immediately, but we're going to try and bring that together into a, a, a joint declaration or statement, which we will send a draft around a week or two after this session uh, to the key panelists, um, just so we have some text um, together that we can uh, agree on in terms of how to increase our cooperation. So um, I won't take any more time, Chris. Um, thanks for giving me the floor and I hand it back. Great, thanks very much, Hendrik. And then now I pass it over to Alka. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, yes, my name is Alka Alka Pauls, uh, indeed a former colleague of Chris and uh, Hendrik. Uh, at Giant, I was working as project manager. Uh, I now moved to KPMG uh, to be working there as a consultant AI uh, within the trusted analytics department. Um, and today, here I'll uh, take questions from the room um, and we'll uh, hand them. Uh, back to uh, you, Chris. Thanks, Alka. Uh, and so uh, to everyone that's here today, uh, that's joining us uh, both in person and online, um, the, the idea is that uh, you here can help us to shape this uh, declaration as well. We really value your input into this too. Um, and so uh, what I'd like to do now is move over to the questions uh, to pose to the three panelists and also to the rest of the room. Uh, if you wish to chip in, please don't hesitate to raise your hand um, and, uh, and we'll give you the floor. Uh, so my first question, uh, and I'll, I'll direct this uh, to, to Mark first. Um, what for you, what would you say is, are the main challenges regarding the geo community uh, and, and the collaboration? Uh, that's um, happening across continents. So what, what are the main challenges to that, this collaboration, do you see? Thank you, Chris. Um, first of all, before trying to, to give elements of answer to, to that question, I, I wanted to cite, uh, to make a citation from uh, Reuna, our Chilean uh, member, uh, Chilean uh, Research and Education Network. A, a rapid and fluid exchange of information among researchers worldwide is an important facilitator of scientific progress. Uh, I think this is key here uh, in, in that context, especially in the context of GEO. Uh, one, I think one of the main challenges is, first of all, the, the big diversity of uh, stakeholders that are involved in, in the GEO community. It's, uh, it's a, a, a huge community, actually, and uh, really uh, uh, getting to the, together all, all that uh, this universe is uh, uh, it requires 
has, it requires a certain uh, infrastructure, I think. And then that's maybe where we, we can play a role, but that, that's uh, for, for the next question. But in the meantime, th this would be one of, of, of the main challenges, uh, I would say. Uh, there are, in, in, within this uh, challenge, I, I would say there, there are basically two, two sub-challenges, I would say. The one is the technical one, the platforms uh, that uh, have, have to be used and have to be uh, synchronized really between all these uh, stakeholders and that uh, that's one one thing and the other thing that uh, was raised at uh, our first meeting at, at cop 26 really by by the researchers uh, themselves so Charlene was uh, among them and also Lincoln from uh, uh, our colleague uh, Lincoln from Brazil uh, from INPE in Brazil uh, is uh, really capacity building I think uh, this is really something that is being demanded uh, quite strongly by the whole community uh, in that sense. Uh, really, uh, one thing is to have uh, the technical capacity, I mean, I mean the, the infrastructure capacity to, to bring the, the stakeholders together and to bring uh, together the, 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 to, to implement the whole uh, data chain towards uh, fr from data that goes from data to information and to knowledge and finally to to the to end in the hands of the uh, decision makers hopefully uh, but the other thing is really human humanly uh, the, the capacity uh, to use all all those uh, tools and uh, in, in order to 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 be able to 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 achieve these uh, decision making process, uh, th that's what I how I see the 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 main challenges uh, of, of this uh, quite uh, large community. Uh, Thanks very much, Mark. Now that it's it's interesting that you mentioned about the the free flow of data and also that the the technical platforms and the capacity building, but also as you mentioned, the infrastructure capacity is essential with all of those three in harmony then that that can obviously lead greater flow of data but also uh to take full advantage of the data for use in research um and i'd like to pass the uh, the question over to to yusuf this time uh yusuf what, what what do you see uh are the main challenges for collaboration within geo uh at the moment yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Mark, for covering almost uh, most of the challenges. But let me add something that uh, it's not directly capacity building, but uh, engagement with these communities to get them aware of the technologies that we can provide. So I, I definitely they will need uh, capacity building and training. But at the same time, I know that I, I've been in, uh, for example, in uh, Afri Geo symposiums in Africa, and they are not aware of the technology that we can provide to them, either through the connectivity or through uh, providing the appropriate infrastructure. They are not aware of EDRO, for example. They are not aware of uh, access mechanisms that uh, many of them. So because they used to use, to use their labs and they use their, uh, let's say, infrastructure at the campus level but they are not aware that there is there is there are mechanisms and means to access resources beyond their labs beyond their universities beyond the borders of their countries and so on so i believe we need also to get more engaged with these communities that's uh, one of the messages i want to pass also uh, it's something complements the capacity building but also it's it's needed in different way Again, uh, for the decision making uh, structure and so on, it's it's also another challenge. Uh, we need to also to approach them in uh, to, with the language that they understand, uh, because we used to speak as uh, infrastructure providers, technical and so on, but now we need to approach them through through political messages like SDGs. SDGs cannot be achieved without more engagement with uh, with the country to achieve these SDGs through policies uh, at the national level, uh, access, uh, let's say, open access uh, um, policies uh, uh, to adapt also like with the, the, the recent uh, United UNESCO SDG, uh, UNESCO's uh, uh, 
recommendations for open science and so on. These are very important, important mechanisms that also should be adapted at the uh, policy level, either at the national level or at the regional level also. Thank you. Thanks very much, Yusuf. And um, you make a really good point there about um, the not just the engagement with the user communities, but the, the languages that we use or the language that we use to talk to the research, uh, to the um, to the user communities. That is essential without that, um, without speaking to people in the language that they understand, um, it, you lose trust, or at least I found that you lose trust and collaboration really can only occur at the speed of trust. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, 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 I'm with you on that one. I, I strongly agree that we, we need to be able to uh, articulate the offering and the, the value of the uh, research and education networks to end users and to the user communities uh, so that people can take full advantage of, uh, of the services that are on offer. Um, I'd like to uh, move over to Charlene this time. Um, Charlene, from from a researcher's perspective, you've obviously you, um, your background. You've seen uh, the work that the research and educations uh, research and education networks can perform. But uh, from a uh, an outsider's perspective, what do you see are the main challenges for uh, the the research and education community to support researchers uh, in using uh, Earth observation data. Okay, so for the previous points that have been raised, I totally agree. But I would like to mention that the geo community is quite diverse. And when we take the various uh, areas, like if we take Latin America, Africa, we don't necessarily have the same challenges in terms of science. So we are not faced to the same problems and we don't have the same research priorities. So. I think the NRA should be aware of this diversity in terms of uh, question, research questions and in terms of priorities. Even if we all are speaking of floods, they are not, the floods do not have the same impacts. So they do not have the same priority in the various um, geographical areas. So I think you should be aware of this complexity the, in scientific context is not um, so simple. So maybe the UN should make an effort to discuss and better understand um, what are the research questions and um, the priority for each continent. And also try to find where we overlap. Like maybe the challenges are different, but there are some points where we have the same challenges. So this can also help mm. to understand what, what are our needs. Thanks very much, Charlene. Um, I'm just making notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's actually a really good point. Um, uh, and this kind of comes back to, to us to, to take that on board in order to say, okay, we do need to start talking with research communities in our in our in the continents that we represent. Yeah. As you say, to better understand what it is that the researchers are focused on. And what what we would like to do is find what the commonalities are, what what the common challenge challenges are, because together then we can help tackle those common challenges. Uh, but mm -hmm. you're right, um every every um every continent has their own research focus and that's one of the reasons why uh, geo as an organization um has uh, certain flagship programs that are focused on specific regions so amerigeo is for um uh, the americas north and Latin, uh, mm -hmm. north and south uh, afrogeo covers the entire continent of africa eurogeo focuses on europe and then aogeo which is asia oceana Oceania, um, that, that focus on, on Asia and uh, the, the Pacific. But even so, uh, we, we still need to, uh, I mean, the, there's a key element missing from, from this room today, and that's the, the representation from Asia. Um, 
at least at an infrastructure level. And that's something that we uh, as uh, research communities need to address to, to bring them uh, into this discussion as well. Um, thanks very much, Charlene. Um, so what one thing that I, I am interested in is from your perspective, where, where do you think NRENs can play a role here? So we've talked about the challenges of uh, engaging with user communities, the diversity that exists across the world, and also uh, the, the need for the free flow of data in order to perform research. But where can, where can NRENs and regional research networks um, help contribute to, uh, to tackling these, these challenges? One of the things that maybe the NREN can help with is uh, to increase the literacy, like the digital literacy of um, some scientists. Like you self pointed out, um, many researchers, they, they keep with um, ancient ways, like traditional ways. So there is still a need um, in Africa anyway, to improve this digital literacy, like to get used to new te technological ways that exist. And some scientists, they have research uh, ideas, but they don't know that it's actually possible to implement it because the technology already exists. So they need to be aware. So in terms of programming and also for women, uh, especially here in Africa, the, there should be a target for women because they need to be aware that they can do this type of activities or research. So maybe think of targeting um, this, the women in terms of uh, literacy in, uh, for digital literacy. Yeah, this is important. And also, this is a point, this is personal to me, it's in terms of um, monitoring. So there's uh, new technologies for monitoring the environment. And I think the NREN can actually help in supporting the development of local monitoring technologies. Yeah. Well, that, the, I, I, uh, I know what you mean about um, increasing the digital literacy um, and, and the ways that people previously are working to very old methodologies um for example we've spoken before about data cubes and how um you can download a piece of uh, or, or a uh, a satellite image to your local machine in order to process the data but then once you've processed that data it's then it just remains on your machine uh, you can't ever um replicate it again unless you rerun the scripts and yet using something like a data cube uh, you can uh, store the pre-processed data so that you can uh, send queries and scripts to to the data cube in order to to use it. And that way, uh, many people can then reuse the same set of data rather than it relying on an individual to process it directly. Um, uh, switching over to um, uh, well, and, and also I just wanted to say thank you as well for mentioning the point about targeting women. Uh, I think that's incredibly important uh, and yeah I, I think that that's definitely a role that the uh, the regional research networks I believe want to try and um, mm -hmm. um, moving over to to Yusuf uh, given what Charlene's just mentioned about the um, from her perspective as a researcher about the help that research and education networks can provide wh where do you see uh, help from ASREN, for example, uh, being able to uh, contribute to to meeting these um, these challenges. Yeah, thank you. Uh, can I just before that uh, point out something very important about the role of NRENs? I think uh, NRENs and regional networks are also uh, very important stakeholder for uh, uh, internet governance so uh, and so on IGF internet governance forum we are not taking part uh, substantial role in and uh, maybe part in the in the, in, in the discussions and so on and even the audience is very little because we are not promoting uh, 
uh, ourselves as a, as one of the uh, very important stakeholders. And I also believe that the academia and research are not well represented at the uh, IGF. So I, this is a call, which I always keep uh, one slide dedicated for this uh, to invite all entrants and regional networks to be part of the internet governance, either at the national, continental, or the, region, the global level. So for example, ASIN is a member of the Arab governance, Arab uh, IGF, and so on. Not to, to link this back to, to the role of uh, entrants and so uh, we started a very good plan supported by the Africa Connect 3 project through, uh, we will do several activities related to our engagement with the, the, the communities. Basically, we will, we would like to, it's part, part of it is um, awareness and bringing awareness through participating to the, to the, these, the, the events of these communities and to invite them to our, to our events. For example, we have, uh, speakers from uh, Earth Observation in our conference and so on. So this is one. Uh, what we, we uh, beyond that, we are now preparing a survey uh, like uh, to be circulated uh, to the uh, Afrigio community, uh, other research and education communities in uh, uh, in Africa, uh, to study and analyze their needs in terms of uh, access uh, requirements, access mechanisms, needs of for computing or storage resources and so on. And we will we'll, we'll bring out the report as, as a call for supporting uh, these communities uh, through providing them us with, uh, let's say, the necessary technology, the necessary platforms, uh, maybe clouds or so, to be able to provide to support these communities. Further to that, we are trying to get them uh, to use the educational roaming, edu-roam services and edu-gain and so on. We are also promoting uh, the uh, open science uh, to these communities and through a LibSense project we, that we are, it is actually under the leadership of Wakren. Uh, we are starting uh, like uh, show um, a pilot uh, uh, aggregator uh, for uh, open, open education, open access resources. Uh, actually, we are uh, cooperating, uh, again, the triangle is working well. We are cooperating with Latin America uh, to utilize their, uh, uh, they call it La Refrancia, which is a tool uh, to harvest the, and aggregate uh, data repositories in, in, in the continent. So we are duplicating this in, the, in our region. So we, are, we have a set of opportunities that we want to serve these communities. Uh, uh, I, I think there are, this is the summary of what, what we can do and what we are intending to do, actually. We started doing that. Thank you. Thanks, Yusuf. Uh, I think that's a very good point as well about the, uh, the cooperation that exists between the, uh, the regional research networks already uh, and, and the fact that you're, you're also um, sharing access to common resources. Um, so, for example, um, Red Clara uh, put up uh, to be used for the research and education community. Uh, Mark, um, uh, from, from your perspective, uh, or at least from the perspective of Red Clara, uh, how, how do you see uh, the role of uh, regional research networks and, and NRENs uh, being able to uh, help uh, support uh, this collaboration across, uh, across the world? Yes, thank you, Chris. I, I just want to come back to what Charlene said uh, uh, about the diversity of challenges that uh, different uh, regions of the world are facing. And, uh, but at the same time, I would say precisely that's where the research and education networks can bring together all the, I mean, because uh, all, all those uh, challenges, uh, uh, because really the technicalities of data processing are the same. Uh, in spite of these uh, of this diversity, so really, uh, uh, what we are tending to do is uh, getting together in, in kind of uh, uh, bringing together the, the regional research and education networks and all the national research and education networks in order to reach a kind of a global network. You no, know, in the end, that would bring together all the re research community. That's really something that we are looking to, uh, towards. Uh, because 
I think that the, the uh, research and education networks have a really, the, the, there's a demand uh, of uh, articulation of all this, uh, the, the, the uh, research community and the education community. And th that's where we'll research and education networks have, have to play a role uh, in, in, my, in my view. Thanks, Mark. And um, where um, where do you find or where, where do you feel that um, or how how does what you've just said uh, enable us to uh, contribute either directly or indirectly uh, to the realization of uh, the sustainable development goals? Yes, um, I think uh, the 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 infrastructure, the tools, the digital tools are a critical factor in research and in, uh, uh, well, in, in the challenges that we are facing. It's a critical factor in, in the sense that this enhances the effectiveness of uh, uh, scientific research, of, uh, of the of observation, of verification, of the validation process, uh, of diagnosis, diagnostics, uh, and of mon monitoring that uh, Shalin uh, mentioned also. Uh, and in the end of the, it's really, it, it's on all these factors that uh, we, uh, uh, that the effective implementation of solutions uh, is based on. You know? uh, that, that's where uh, uh, we can bring, an asset, a, a real asset, a kind of a, a, it's a kind of a worldwide public good, really, for uh, uh, research and for uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 these challenges. In in my sense, for thanks, Mark. And uh, Yusuf, um, in what ways do you think that uh, Azran or oh, is able to uh, contribute to uh, the SDGs? Maybe there's a you mentioned before in your uh, at the start, you were uh, going to talk about different SDGs that you're working to help uh, support. Um, what would you? What's your opinion on this? Yeah, thank you. Actually, we are putting the SDGs on our map uh, and our priority, all of them. Uh, you know, in a way that we can see uh, how we can promote uh, actually putting our, our cooperation under the word science, science cooperation. So we started this through various activities. One of them, for example, that we have been, uh, we have uh, had a full session under the science summit that has been uh, conducted under uh, the 76th uh, General Assembly of the, of the United Nations. Uh, we had the full session uh, we, where we demonstrated how can science cooperation be an instrument and the means to achieve the SDGs? Uh, the main focus in these, uh, in these sessions was one of them was the climate, uh, life underwater, and uh, uh, life below water, I mean, the 14th, uh, and also the, uh, uh, I think uh, there was another one on uh, education and so on. But uh, we are looking at all all SDGs. Uh, we are not we are not entrants, and uh, their their role are not to achieve the SDGs. But they are uh, they can be uh, uh, provide other mechanisms through uh, promoting uh, the SDGs and the role of science through uh, to achieve these SDGs to the decision makers, which we are which we are already doing. We are doing that also through uh, co cooperation directly with the United Na Nations, uh, UNESCO, I mean the UNESCO for uh, Open Science. Uh, and, so, and also uh, we are now moving beyond the infrastructure. So for, for example, our conference that will be taking place next week, I invite you all to attend this conference because we have the three days, one day dedicated for entrance, basic business, business uh, infrastructure and services. The second day is dedicated for science uh, at the policy level, science cooperation to achieve SDGs. It's a full day uh, with uh, uh, many sessions, speakers from all over the world. We have speakers also from Giant. Uh, I would like to thank Chris and uh, Hendrik who, who are contributing to this session also. 
The third day will be dedicated for science, uh, for open science and open science platforms and so on. So we are trying to promote all the science to achieve all SDGs. I, I know research, as I said, just mentioned in my previous intervention, that endurance can be uh, instrumental to support uh, achieving all the SDGs uh, with by either, either to, to talk to the politicians, to the decision makers, they can, we can speak also and uh, uh, coordinate with the scientists and researchers and encourage uh, research towards achieving the SDGs. Also to the infrastructure, uh, our, our sister organization around the world. And this is exactly what we are doing now with the, through the cooperation with the Latin America, WACRIN, Ubuntu Alliance and Giant. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, and just to pick up on that point that you mentioned about open science platforms uh, and, and, and providing open science platforms in order to try and help achieve the SDGs, I'd just like to come over to, to Charlene uh, and, and uh, pose the question to you. Um, could, could, could open science platforms um, support uh, communities in achieving the sustainable development goals uh, from your perspective as a, a researcher? Yes, definitely. I think um, the, the, for me, the point is to start evaluating where we are now in terms of um, achieving the SDGs, what have been done so far and what is left to do. And if we have to speed up kind of to reach the goals and in that part that is left to be done, how open science can actually um, play a role. For example, here we, we use a lot of really heavy data. So we use um, HPC, the high performance computing. So this is really helpful because we can have a very heavy data sets and we can process them. Uh, Sometimes we have internet challenges, but if the internet is good and if we have good computing capacity, I think this can speed up the research that is being done. Yeah. So it's good to first evaluate what has been done so far, what is left to be done. And if there's a need to speed up, we can use what the UN can provide us with support to accelerate what we are ready to do. Surely, um, and that just goes to uh, highlight the uh, the role that, um, as you say, with stable internet and sufficient capacity, you're able to accelerate the work that you do. Um, the, with the tools that you use for high performance computing, are, are they open science tools, or uh, are they more proprietary to the, um, uh, the the systems that you that you run, as in to the vendors? that you purchased the, uh, the high performance computing systems from? No, the question is not clear, please. Ah, sorry. Um, the, the tools that you use for high performance computing, mm -hmm. are they uh, open science tools um, or are they uh, just provided by the vendors who you purchased the high performance computing center from or the, uh, the high performance compute services from? I think it's mixed. Eh? It's mixed. They are not all open science. No. I think it's mixed. We are. It's like we are transitionally. It's a transition towards um, open science. We are not yet fully working in, in open science. No. There's still a lot to learn and like change mindsets and. Um, because when you are you have been used to do in a certain manner, it's not always easy to change. So it takes time. Yeah, we need more flexibility. Yeah, more flexibility. Uh, oh, go ahead, Mark. You jump in. Yes. No. I just wanted to react to what Shannon said, and uh, really in line. Uh, with that, uh, I, I think it's very signi significant. Uh, significant uh, the, the comment. It's uh, 
really the the research and education network i think has and as yusuf has already commented has really to reach out for uh, the the stakeholders in 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 research and in uh, in 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 and and beyond research uh, uh, really uh, there is a, this platform we we offer this platform with a really open uh, promoting open open science and but this has to be to be known and by by the by the stakeholders and the, this is something that we we have to take care of also. Uh, I think uh, we have a, a strong, uh, let's say, public relation uh, 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 task to, to, to do still. And uh, of course, we, we have limited resources. But I think all together, if we precisely, if we get together, we can reach uh, a, a certain, we, we can better reach uh, a certain level of, uh, uh, in that sense, that, that, that's what I want, wanted to, to add. Uh, and beyond that, I wanted to say also that, uh, yes, a, a HPC resources, uh, computing power, this is all, so, these are things that we are dedicated to, no, uh, precisely, and uh, in, in an open way, uh, precisely. And that's uh, something that maybe, researchers don't know, but uh, uh, integration with tools like Copernicus also is uh, something very uh, uh, important. Uh, open, open data uh, flows, uh, that flows through, through, through the network. Uh, these, these are concrete things where it's really important that we get together. That, that's what I wanted to, to say. Um. Go ahead, Yusuf. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I like the way you introduced the uh, HPC through uh, the uh, different, different. You usually we, uh, we we talk about HPCs uh, not in an open way. We just we keep talking about HPCs and so on. Now I like the way you, it's is it uh, under the open access or also or, or open science. I think this is this we need to address this all together. I remember, um, I think that was in 2007, there was a project by the European Commission, and this could be a call now for the European Commission to support us in this. There's a project called Linky Scheme, where, it's, where it was about interconnecting uh, uh, the HPC infrastructure in the Mediterranean region together. I know the, the, the project uh, is very old, and I don't, I don't remember the outcomes because I was not part of that project at that time. And it was followed by a project called VIC, but uh, we, I, from my end, I will recall what, 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 what were these projects about and see if we can build on these uh, uh, through a project, a collaboration project, at least uh, at the, at the, at the and let's say to start with the network of people who are working either in HPC or they need HPCs. Uh, with the support of engineers and regional networks. And uh, from there, we explore and see how we can uh, facilitate open access or open uh, HPC in, in, in an open access mechanism. Thank you. Thanks, Yusuf. Um, we've only got a few more minutes left, uh, so we're drawing to a close now. Um, Anyone from the audience or anyone online, if you do have any questions, please feel free to, to jump in and ask. Um, we're very happy to, <laughs> to have any questions that you want to, to pose. Um, if not, I will ask uh, my last couple of questions uh, to the panellists. Um, Yusuf, you mentioned before about um, wanting to support all the sustainable development goals in general, um, and at least we uh, going from what uh, Mark said earlier, uh, Luis Cardenas said um, the, the NRENs accelerate and grow uh, all, of the, uh, all of the SDGs. Um, but are there any specific SDGs that you'd like to, uh, that, that you think that we should target with support, given that we, we don't have uh, unlimited resources, we can't target everything at the same time. Uh, is there anything that you think we should prioritize? I believe, thank you. I believe the climate is the priority. Uh, it's on the priority at uh, 
uh, the European Commission, the United Nations. Uh, maybe you, you are aware that you, you, you've been part of the COP26 and the climate actions and, to, uh, and so on. From my end, I think I believe the climate is the priority for us at ASRIN. And we already started as agreed in, uh, in the COP26 uh, discussions, uh, uh, I think it was in last November or so. Uh, we need to start identifying uh, these communities. Uh, uh, the issue is not, not only to find the researchers uh, who do research in, uh, in, in climate uh, or climate related research and so on, but also we need to have uh, another level of uh, decision, make, decision makers, uh, leaders, let's say leaders in climate, like uh, maybe directors or chair, chair people of authorities that are responsible for climate at the, at the national level. In addition to uh, decision makers at the ministerial level or the policy making level. So we need to, to, to talk to, 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 to address these three levels of people. Uh, of course, with with endings, endings are, are are always on the, on the table, and and uh, and as, but these three kind of level of people, we need to address them so that we can have a community uh, at uh, again at the levels of national, regional, and international, and uh, from there we can send a call that we need to cooperate and we to, we we do need to bring. Uh, uh, tools, infrastructure, technologies to support the climate actions uh, with the support of these, uh, to support the researchers who are doing research uh, related to uh, uh, climate in addition to uh, what is going on uh, at the policy level, because the policy level and uh, is, is, is also very important. Thank you. Thanks very much, Yusuf. Uh, uh, we had a, a comment uh, from one of the, uh, the the participants online. Uh, Ursula, uh, if, if you'd like to, uh, you can have the floor um, to, to um, pose your question or to, to make a statement. If not, um, well, uh, basically Ursula is just saying uh, in, in the message that uh, she thinks that um, science and knowledge should generally be open uh, openly accessible for all, uh, but with remuneration uh, of the, the builders of, of those tools. And I think that's that's definitely something um, that that needs to be addressed because we all need to eat at the end of the day. Um, and not everything is uh, free, uh, although it could be free at the point of use. Um, it just depends, obviously, who, who pays for uh, for this, a lot of the the NRENs and the research and education networks in general are funded by national governments, um, and it's it's public infrastructure, uh, which is why we're we're not pro not for profit organisations, um, and we strongly believe that we need to ensure that the uh, everyone in the world has equitable access to the the data that researchers. Um, both benefit from and also publish. Um, so yeah, I, I I do understand where you're coming from on that. And Mark, if you've got a comment. Yes, just uh, adding to what you just said and what uh, Yusuf said, I, I completely agreeing on, on all those lines. Uh, and climate change is, uh, of course, the main challenge that uh, humanity is facing, I, I guess, uh, at this stage. And uh, of course, uh, responding to, to, to those challenges, uh, we work. We already work on 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 the, uh, SDG nine and SDG seventeen. It's uh, partnerships. Uh, the partnerships uh, are fundamental in in that sense. But I I want to add just to what you just said, uh, uh, Chris. Uh, I think what is also important uh, for for this is. Capacity building. I, I I'm coming coming back to that. It's uh, SDG four, uh, educa education and uh, Article six of uh, UNFCCC. Uh, really, it's uh, something that 
we need to maybe to 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 focus on also in in future. I, I think there is a big demand on on that. Uh, from what I derive from the discussions we we've had uh, uh, these uh, last uh, times. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mark. And so I'd just like to um, use this opportunity to bring the session to a close, um, both to thank all of the panelists uh, and to. Uh, uh, to Hendrik and Auka for all of their help in organising and having this uh, session set up, and to everyone here that's attended uh, and contributed. Thanks very much, Ursula, for your your comments as well. I think we've uh, we've got an idea now of the direction that we want to go in, um, focusing on uh, capacity building with uh, the uh, various SDGs, but also um, to focus on climate uh, and climate action. Uh, with uh, all of the, the various uh, aspects that we need to um, tackle with that. Um, thank you once again uh, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Goodbye. Thank you.